Hey, David. How are you? I'm great. How's everything? How's the baby? She's good. She's yeah. good. Yeah, I know. A lot's happened since I last saw yeah, you. Yeah, five years. A lot has happened. <laughs> it's so crazy. So a lot of people from my audience might not know who you are, but you are one of the most incredible people I know. And ever since I met you at On the Town when we did a Broadway show together, I've always just thought you are so fascinating. So I want to tell everybody your story and, and share it with the world because I think like... Of course, I'd love to share some stuff. Yay! And okay. I also just want to say that you, Megan, are just as incredible. I, I, you're the one person I remember the most in the town. You're incredible. You're so sweet. So, so we had these fun moments. I think it was during the museum scene in On the Town. You and I were always off. You were in a caveman outfit. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like in my little midriff, miss, like I was going to my singing lesson. That was my yeah. next scene. And we always had this little minute during the museum scene before you had to go up and be a caveman where we would like chat. And <laughs> it was fun because you and I are both from a ballet background, but we found ourselves, well, you, this was not your first Broadway show, but we found ourselves in the Broadway world yeah. a little bit. And, and that's a unique thing. And I was... I think that I was gravitated towards you because I think I felt you understood where I came from. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like the ballet world is definitely its own category, you know, where um, I think it was a great foundation for me growing up. It has helped me with everything I've done since. Um, so I, it's interesting to see how we've all come from the ballet world and just kind of veered off into singing, acting, um, Broadway shows, and it's just beautiful to see how we're all training the same way, and then we go and find that thing that we love the most, that thing that sparks us. Yeah. And then, and then that's what we do. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so in those moments during On the Town, we had fun chats about where we came from, and I was just so amazed to hear your story. So, for those that don't know. You were one of the original Billy Elliot leads, lead boys on yeah. Broadway. Yeah, this was back in uh, 2009. <laughs> and that was a whole experience of itself. Um, it was, it's definitely a different way of growing up. You know, a lot of my siblings grew up in school and they, they had this, what you would call a normal life. And I just grew up on stage, on Broadway, dancing, singing, acting. Um, and honestly, I don't think I would have it any other way. Yeah. I, I'm so happy and glad that I went through that experience because it taught me that as a kid, I was able to do things that today I can't do anymore. Right. <laughs> you know? So you realize that that energy, you always have it with you. You always carry it with you. And as a child, you have all this energy, all this room to explore and to, to do what you want to do, whatever it is that you love doing, you know? And I was fortunate enough to have a family that supported me growing up so I could find what it is that I wanted to do later on in life. Okay, I'm so going to interrupt you one more time. I don't want yeah. you to talk to you any longer. Do you know that the colors are changing? The colors are changing? Yeah. yeah. So, okay. That looks great. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, they'd be like, where am I? Yeah, it's a little trippy. Yeah, it was trippy. Okay. No <laughs> <laughs> okay. So... So tell me about your parents and your growing up and how they supported you and, and the different way that you, and how did you find yourself on Broadway yeah. as a, what were you, nine or 10? I was, so the very first audition process, I was 12 years old. And how this all kind of started was I grew up in Montreal, Canada, because um, my parents had defected from Cuba um, in the 90s and I ended up being born in Canada and I was raised there for the first eight years of my life. And then my dad found a job as a biochemist in San Diego. So we moved to California to the States for the first time. And this is where in San Diego is where I started to dance. Um, my mom had me go to some ballet classes and I remember just loving it because of how challenging it was. It was something that I couldn't get the first day I was there. So I wanted to go back and see if I could get it. And then I couldn't get it, so I wanted to go back and so on. So after that, I was very into the ballet. Um, and I ended up auditioning for SAB and JKO um, 
um, at, in New York City. So, and I was offered a scholarship to go to New York after that to start studying ballet. And then finally, when I got to New York, this whole Billy Elliot thing um, unraveled and I was found through a magazine that I was in, like Point Magazine or whatever. <laughs> and then the casting director just called up uh, my school and they were like, hey, um, why don't you come in and audition for, for this Broadway show? We're looking for kids. And it was kind of terrifying because I didn't even know what Broadway was. I was so young, I hadn't even heard Broadway. You've never seen a Broadway uh, show yet? No, I hadn't seen anything. And <laughs> I didn't even know Broadway was a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I started off, um, I, I was freaking out a little bit because I had to learn how to tap dance, sing, act, do like flips off pianos and back handsprings, all this crazy. You know how Broadway is. They, yeah. just want, you, they want you doing everything. Yeah. <laughs> After that, um, the audition went great and I had like six months to prepare for Billy Elliot. And then after that, I went to London for a little bit to get this Jody accent down. This uh, uh -huh. British accent down, which was a hassle because at the time I was so young and I had just learned English because I had moved to the States when I was like nine. So I had a heavy accent. A heavy, so I had to first get rid of my accent. So and then, in Canada, were you speaking what? Spanish? French. 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 You were speaking French? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. I went. I and went, do you speak Spanish with your parents? Yeah. At home, I speak Spanish and then I. Grew up until fourth grade speaking French at school, and then finally I came to the English land. So it, it's been it's it was nice that I was I had a lot of help from so many people to get all of these things synchronized together so I could be in the show. Um, and then finally it all happened. I started doing the show, and it was one of the most challenging things I've ever done in my life. I can't imagine. Uh, and there were two other boys, so you guys yeah. always split the work. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Kirill and Trent are uh, still two of my best buddies today. What are they doing now? So Trent is like the super genius. He's like graduated from Princeton University or whatever, you know. He's, he's very smart. And Kirill Kulish is in California. He was in Dancing in the Stars. Okay. Uh, Dancing with the Stars, sorry. Yeah. Dancing in the Stars. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, so yeah, they, they they're doing great though, and it's it's been nice to see how we've all kind of found what it is that we love and tapped into that. Yeah, that's so cool. I yeah. love that you guys are still close friends. So, so you guys have what a year on Broadway together? Uh, we had about two years on Broadway together, and then one year of rehearsal before that. So it was oh, three years together. Yeah, we were especially like, brothers, as, like, like young boys, and also. In the dance world, when you finally meet people that are as passionate about what you're doing yeah. as you know as you are, then it's like you're bonded for life. Oh, absolutely. And especially on Broadway, everyone is very passionate because to get on Broadway, you have to be very passionate, you know? You really it's, have um, to. Yeah, because in the ballet world, when you're younger, when you're a kid, you ju you're just really doing classes. You're going, you take your classes, maybe you'll have like an end of the year show to show your family, um, but you never have this ensemble of hundreds of very passionate people, all the way from musicians to actors, right. um, combining together to put something on stage, you know, and, it, and we were 12 at the time when we were doing That's that, so I didn't, incredible even, experience. I didn't even understand it at the time, <laughs> I was just kind of going with the flow, you know. And then you guys won a Tony. Oh, yeah. At that like was, what, thirteen? You won a Tony. Thirteen, yeah, that was crazy. That was um, I did not expect that because we were going up against some of my favorite actors and people who I still think are a million times better than I I ever will be. Like Brian Darcy James. Uh huh. Amazing. So amazing. like, there's this amazing YouTube video everyone should check out of you guys, like the three of you little boys being called up to the stage. I mean, do you remember that moment? Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> It was, I just remember everything blocked out, and it was just me, my two brothers, and we were on that stage, and I just remember everyone was, like, laughing and crying and clapping and just waiting to see what would come out of our mouths, and the three of us just, we, like, we were stuttering. We couldn't even come up with words to explain so what we were cute. doing. <laughs> that is so cute. But, and, like, so where's your Tony right now? Where do you keep it? So I keep it with my, my family. My, it's my family's house. That's I don't nice. carry that around. I like to, you know, always carry light stuff. I, I 
pretty much walk around with a bag and I just move from place to place. So I can't be moving around with my Tony. So I'll leave that <laughs> for my parents. My parents can enjoy that. <laughs> That's awesome. And I bet they're so proud of you. Were they just in shock? Oh, were they oh, in the audience so when that happened? Oh yeah. They were all, they were, in, I was sitting next to them and then when they announced my name, my mom just grabbed me and she's like, oh my God. Incredible. It's like giving me chills. It's so incredible. Yeah. What did yeah. you learn from that time in Billy Elliot? Like, how many shows were you doing a week then? I was doing three or four shows a week. And school. And, how were you doing school? Yeah. And the, I mean, the biggest thing that I learned from Billy Elliot in general, from just doing all those shows, is that you can always do a little more. Just when you think you're dead, you can always do another show. You can always go out and dance a little more, you know, and sing a little more. That's true. And I think, I think Broadway, especially as a kid, taught me to go beyond my expectations, go beyond what I think I'm capable of doing, you know. And then I carry that with me throughout my life. I'm like, hey, when I was 12, I did all this yeah. stuff. Yeah. I better be able to do this, some of this right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. I love that. I mean, it's like... It almost must be something hard to live up to when you have such an achievement at such a young age. Did you ever feel like kind of oh, pressure absolutely. from it? Absolutely. I just felt like I needed to live up to this expectation that everyone had of me. Oh, this kid won a Tony. He has, this is where he needs at to go. At 13, think, yeah. Yeah. And I think when I realized that there was, n there was nothing that I needed to do to prove to myself or anyone else, that's when I started to find what I was truly passionate about. And that's when I started to do what I'm truly passionate about. And it's, okay. it's not even about trying to be better than anyone or being better than this or better than that. It's just about literally doing what you love. Cause that's yeah. the only thing that's going to get you through the day. You know? like being authentic to yourself yeah. and, and your desires yeah. and what you really want to spend your time doing. Exactly. And it's not, it's not about the rat race. It's not about yeah. how far can I go? It's about one is I think I've, through my experience, I've learned that really life is just connections. It's just who you, the people that are around you, the people that you love. That's really what you're going to remember. That's really what's going to mean the most to you. It's not, oh, I got a Tony. Oh, I have this. Oh, I, none, none of that matters in the end. Mm -hmm. You know, so once I realized that, then I didn't need to prove anything to anyone because I'm just living now. I'm not trying to prove anything. How long did it take you to come to terms with that under, and understand that? I think... When I came back from the army, it was a rude awakening into what the world is really like, uh -huh. and not just this like Broadway bubble or Bally bubble. I was I was exposed to the world and how things work, and it was it definitely took me out of that zone. And gave I you some realized, perspective. Yeah, it gave me some perspective because I realized that hey, uh, most people don't even know what Broadway is like. This That's I'm funny. in this bubble here with a, with millions of people who enjoy Broadway, but there's millions of other bubbles with millions of other things That's that true. people enjoy, you know? Right. So it's, it's about not taking yourself too seriously and not exactly. thinking that what you like is the most important thing. Right. <laughs> you know? Wise <laughs> words. Yeah. Wise words. Um, I also, we didn't touch on how did you first get into ballet as a, as a young boy? Like, did you have a sister that danced or how did it start for you? Um, yeah. So my, my mom at the time, she, I played soccer in school. Well, I guess we should, you're from Cuba, which has a really strong. Yeah, it's, it's a very strong ballet culture. Yeah. For sure. Um, pretty, a lot of boys in Cuba, in fact, families who were poor, who can give their children what they needed. They would send their children to ballet schools because ballet schools would give them food, a bed and everything they needed. And they would grow to be like Carlos Acosta, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, that, it's definitely very ingrained in the culture and my mom always had this idea that maybe I would do something in the fields of the art, you know, and she saw that I was very strong physically and that I liked to run, rollerblade, just do all these physical activities by the time I was like two, three years old, so she's... You were rollerblading it too? <laughs> oh yeah, I was doing everything, but I couldn't talk till I was like seven, so... That's amazing! I had to balance, you know, to balance. Well, you were but, juggling a lot of languages. Yeah, that, that, I think that's probably why it was. Yeah, for sure. But, <laughs> but my mom put me in ballet because she, she saw how physically um, active I wanted to be. And that's how pretty much it started. And Did she put other siblings in ballet? Um, my, she put my younger sister in ballet, but she didn't like it. Yeah. <laughs> and 
uh, she wasn't, she also didn't really, you know, if you're not passionate about ballet, yeah. you're, it's one of those things that ballet, you really got to love it. Yeah. You either <laughs> love it or you hate it usually. Or you hate it. Yeah. yeah. It's one or the other. So, yeah. but for me, I loved it and it, it kind of paved this path, this road that has opened so many doors for me. You it's know? so true. Yeah. I um, remember when we did On the Town, Bonnie, our stage manager, showed me your audition tape. For, for Billy Elliot. Oh my God. I haven't even seen I it. I think it was. Or was it an audition tape that you put together afterwards for something else? You might have been older. Maybe it was after Billy Elliot. It was you doing a really classical ballet, like a manege and like all the Saccone turns yeah. or something in a studio. And I was like, whoa. I mean, you really were talented. Oh, that was, that might have been the audition I sent in for On the Town. For On the Town? That's I that that means a lot that you think that was that looked decent because I, I hadn't like, danced in three years. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that's a that means no. A lot. You were, were really gifted. Are you still doing ballet now? I'm curious. Um, I'm I'm not. I'm yeah. not because my body just doesn't handle it as well as I used to. <laughs> yeah. One. No, I and, hear you. And two, I think it's it's ballet has served its purpose for me. Which it has served its purpose in in the way that it's opened the doors that I I knew I would end up in one yeah. day. Yeah. No, and because for me, what I'm really passionate about is acting. Yeah. Um, Same for my brother. And, yeah, acting and music and talking about philosophy. That's just three really weird combos, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow it'll converge. Maybe it'll be yeah, some yeah, interesting that's not Broadway a show. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. You finish Billy Elliot. Do you just go back to regular school? What are you, fourteen now? Yeah. And that was that was actually a, kind of tough um, going back to school after be, after living such a different life. That's like and, really hard. Oh yeah. Um, like I anticlimactic up, and a little bit depressing, probably. Very, it was a little depressing. I went back to school and I just remember feeling so disconnected with everyone in in the classrooms, with the teachers, with just the way things were running I just didn't feel connected with what was happening I think maybe that could have been because I hadn't been exposed to a school um to a public school or private school for all these years so going back into it after that's hard. being on Broadway and and having all this attention and all this stuff and now you're just like dropped in the middle of this public school and you know hope for the best were you trying to get back onto Broadway or what was the goal um I think my goal was to figure out a lot of answers to my questions. Like, what does I, David want? Yeah, like, what do I want? What's the purpose of my life? Like, what, what's the meaning of all of this? Like, yeah. well, why are we here? You know, yeah. and what's it all for? I had to figure out all these questions because I felt like if I didn't know and understand these basic fundamental questions... I couldn't really live and do what I wanted to do because I, I wouldn't know what I wanted. Yeah. You, you kind of have to um, have like an inner dialect with yourself and figure out what you love, what you don't, what you want, what you don't want, and then start making decisions that brings that reality closer to you. Right. You know? And also like sometimes what we're gifted at isn't necessarily what we love doing. Like we've all seen yeah, exactly. in the ballet world, people that have those phenomenal bodies or just such a t natural talent and they like don't really love it. Cause it's yeah. just like, you, it's like this special combination that you have to find. Like it's kind of this, this mentality that people think that you can only be talented at one thing. You're only gifted at one thing. No, everyone's gifted at so many things and you just have to find something that you give to that and that you love. It's, yeah, it's yeah, that yeah. I love that. Know? I love that. <laughs> wow. uh, more, more wise words. Um, so, okay, so you're back in San Diego. Yes. And somehow... Oh, no, this time, oh, after Billy Elliot, I stayed in New York. Oh, okay. Because at, at that time, my whole family had moved to New York, so okay. I just stayed there. I finished school. Oh, okay. And, and right after school, I, I always had this, this, no one ever understands this, but... Deep down, I always wanted to see what the military was like. So when I was in my teenage years, I I had thought about joining the military. And then when I turned 17, I ended up joining the Army. 
Um, and that was just, I still don't know why I did that to this day. You told me in On the Town you saw Black Hawk Down when you were like 13 <laughs> or 14. <laughs> Let me tell you, the military is nothing like the movie. I am the sure. Tell everyone right now. <laughs> it, I, was, I was just fascinated. I think what really I was fascinated about was the camaraderie that I would see in these movies of these soldiers being together and being put through really harsh circumstances to um together they build this bond this camaraderie that connection that human connection that you rarely feel sometimes because everyone's so preoccupied with all these things that they have to be preoccupied about you know mm-hmm. <laughs> life mm-hmm. is a little bit stressful sometimes you have to work out this stuff and that stuff but in a scenario like the military there is none of that it's just you this guy and then you're both doing things that the military is asking you to do and you just have to do them, you know. How was your mom when you signed up? Oh, oh, she was so mad. <laughs> she was so pissed at me. But I think she understood that it was just something that I needed to do. It was, I think it was also part of me finding answers to my questions. Like the whole army experience. And then after On the Town, I went. I did a backpacking trip to Mexico. Like that was just all me trying to figure out what it is that I wanted to do. Um, Because I felt like I was kind of reaching this dead end because I didn't know what I actually wanted, you know. Right, right. So what it, can you, you talk about a little bit about your military experience? Oh, yeah, of course. So, <laughs> I'm, I'm I, sure people are incredibly curious, like, yeah. where, what did you do? Where did you go? Like, what's a, a, a story you'll never forget? Yeah, well, I'll start from, I'll start from, like, basic training. Yeah. I just remember uh, going to Fort Benning, Georgia, Sand Hill, um, and that was about two to, I was actually four months long, and that was one of the hardest things I've ever gone through. I mean, I remember the, the second day there, everyone, me along with everyone in the barracks, we were just all, well, what, what are we doing here? Why did we do this to ourselves, you know? Was it like physical exhaustion and then also like lack of sleep or how how it, do they oh test yeah. you it's, it's everything it's lack it's just exhaustion and then lack of sleep and i never knew how much i loved sleep until i joined the military because <laughs> in the army you get maybe four hours of sleep you know and how and do they you expect just, you to function well off of that yeah yeah it's i i mean that's kind of the military thing because you have to be able to function at your worst Right. You know, because right. when you when you get deployed, you're going to be at your worst. You're going to be put in the middle of nowhere, and exhausted, you're be tired, sleepy. So they want to make sure that you can still function when you're at your worst. So that's kind of what basic training really is all about. Um, Sounds fun. I, I, yeah, <laughs> so fun. I remember this. The one of the things I hated the most was the the we had to go into this like uh, chamber. And they would put this, um, oh my God, I forget what the gas is called. It's tear gas, pretty much. And then you would have to recite your name and your social security number. And then like the soldier's creed, which is like this monologue about this big, while you're in this room and like suffocating on this tear gas, all this snot is coming out of you. You're throwing up everywhere. And that was just to prepare you in case of like a chemical attack, you know? Uh (laughs) <laughs> we had to do a little bit of that. And then after that, I was given my duty station after I finished basic training and I graduated. I ended up um, as an infantryman. And then I was sent to Alaska, Fort Wainwright, Alaska. And that was a whole other chapter of its own. I just remember how cold it was. And although Alaska is gorgeous and beautiful, the landscape, it's just one of those places that's really unforgiving. To, yeah, yeah. To, you know, uh, it's not made for people to live there. I I remember one day it was like negative seventy degree, and I went outside. I had to be completely covered, or we get frostbite within like fifteen minutes. And I I had a cup of coffee, and I just threw my coffee, and it just evaporated before it even, even hit the ground. That That's how cold so it was. Crazy. Yeah, I was in I was close to Fairbanks, which is. Um, like r- literally in the middle of Alaska. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. what what were you guys? What was your duty out there? Just at this fort? Yeah, just like so, holding up, literally holding down the fort. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. We had nothing else to do. Uh, we did a lot of uh, mountain warfare training. 
um, cold warfare training, a lot of skiing, um, a lot of sniper training. Um, I was in a recon unit, uh, a recon headquarters platoon over there. So we, I got to learn some pretty neat stuff. Um, but I think after I spent three years in the army, I, by the third year, I was like, all right, I'm good. <laughs> this, this, <laughs> I got what I needed. I'm, I'm good to go out. Yeah. You know? so, so then you got deployed somewhere for real. Um, no, I, I never got deployed. Oh, okay. To, yeah, not Afghanistan or Iraq. So I was okay. very lucky. And that was my, my mom was, that was probably my mom praying every day that yeah. I didn't get sent anywhere. Yeah. Um, you know, so, uh, but yeah, I spent three years on Alaska. And then after that, I, I finished my enlistment contract. And then I went over to, back to New York to see if I could make a life as an artist. <laughs> so how long after you returned from the, you were in the army, right? Yes. Yeah. How long after you returned, did you audition for on the town? That was the same month. <laughs> so oh, I returned, insane. <laughs> I returned to New York and in that same month I get a message from Greg Graham. Remember? Yes. And he, he was like, Hey David, uh, someone got hurt. We need, we need someone to fill in. And I heard you just got back from the military. I don't know if you danced or anything, but <laughs> why don't you just send me a video? And then that video is the one you saw. That's amazing. <laughs> no, you like, we're really doing all the hard stuff. That's insane. <laughs> it's like riding a bicycle. It never really leaves, you know, that... it just looks uglier, but it doesn't leave. But you had all my, all the, you were, you know, in shape probably. <laughs> yeah. I was def after the army, I was, that's the biggest I've ever been. I was like 190 pounds. I needed to like lose all that weight for Broadway. That is so I, I felt like I was one of the, the, the chubby ones. <laughs> <laughs> so this story is just insane to me. So, and you're like, okay. Yeah. And then I, I mean, I was just, I'm pr usually very open to new experiences and new chapters. So I was very excited to see what on the town would bring. And plus I, I knew some people from on the town like Bonnie and Bonnie, the uh, stage manager, yeah, and so I I worked with a a couple of them before, and, and it was. Did you know Stephen Hanna? Yeah. Oh, yeah, Stephen Hanna. He yeah. was older Billy and uh, Billy Elliot. Yeah. So he, he, we partnered together. Yeah, exactly. Billy Elliot. Um. Yeah, he's amazing. Oh, I love that guy. Yeah, he <laughs> is great. He um. Just so people know, he was a principal with New York City Ballet, and him and I got promoted. I think we got promoted to soloist together, and then to principal together. So, oh, at the same time? Yeah. Really? Yeah. So we were like in it together. And then he left to go do Broadway stuff. And then we yeah. ended up in On the Town together years later. He's done, he's done so much. He, has he just did lot. like this giant leap. Smart, smart guy. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that was fun to like, we had our, our little ballet crew there. Um, what were you like when you got into On the Town? Were you like, yeah, this is fun, or like, oh my god, what am I doing? <laughs> no, I, well, here, I'll be honest. At first, I was so excited, and I was so happy, but as a swing, you don't get to go on much sometimes. Oh, that's right, you were a swing at first. Although, although, in On the Town, you go on a lot as a swing. That's but true. there were times where I didn't have anything to do, so I would just be waiting in the back, you know? Yeah. I would, I would watch you dance, and I'm like, oh, so beautiful. <laughs> And then I'd just wait, you know, <laughs> just wait for my turn to go in. But eventually but, you were, you had a, a, a part every night, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, it got to the point where I had, I think I was going on like every night. Yeah. At that point, yeah. You, well, for a minute <laughs> as a swing, you were doing every different role That's each night. Awesome. Honestly, I just want to say I love all the swings out there on, in, in Broadway. You guys, I... I don't know how you do it because I barely survived. <laughs> okay, wait. Let's explain to people that don't know what a swing is. Oh, yeah, of course. So a swing is someone who is part of the ensemble, but they go on when someone gets hurt mm -hmm. or injured or goes on vacation. So then the swing replaces that person for the time being. Um, and then when the swing doesn't have anything to do, they just kind of wait backstage right. until someone gets injured. Right. Hurt or goes on vacation. But basically, <laughs> they're in charge of knowing every oh. part that their gender could do, right? Yeah. Like, I even though sometimes I think Paloma as a swing went on as a guy. She went on as guys, too. <laughs> I 
I had I had eleven tracks, and Paloma had like sixteen, including like men tracks. You know? And like they're not <laughs> the same; they're all different. Like in yeah, my Turnstiles dance, like every guy had like four quick changes in one number. Yeah. And so for each guy, it was a different character that you were playing. Turnstile, remember Turnstile? Yes. My God. <laughs> yes, you're never gonna forget that. I won't. <laughs> Sometimes I look back and I'm like, it kind of seems like a dream. It does. It does seem like it. It was just kind of, it was a very, like, everyone was just, like, so happy. Yeah, we at, at had that time. the happiest we, cast. Yeah, I we had a really nice cast. I don't know if Broadway's always like that. That was my only Broadway show, but I just feel like what I know is, from my experience before I got there, was that um, John Rando and Josh Burgos are some of the nicest people. So that's the director and the choreographer. Yeah. They are some of the nicest people I have ever met in my life. And I did a, a little like interview once somewhere with Josh um, in the middle of On the Town, and someone said, if I want to be in a Broadway show, like what should I do? And he said, you know, you got to be talented, and you got to work hard, and you got to be a good dancer and singer, or what all these things that you would need. But he was like, you know what I really look for is someone that I enjoy working with at 11 p.m. at night in the 10 out of 12 or whatever those are called, yeah. you know, um, in, in like the last hour of the day. Someone that it has a personality that's easy to work with and kind and is not going to be like a drama. And that's an, exactly right. And an issue. I and I think they picked people in such a way that it was a group of really wonderful, nice people and yeah. it was such a joy to be together every, every oh, day. Absolutely. I think something I've noticed as I get older, and I don't know if that's me, my perspective, or just what's going on, is that I've noticed that people kind of, um, for example, in On the Town, you have to, oh, I don't know how to explain it, but like, in On the Town, people are all connected, and you have that connection, and each Broadway show kind of has their connection, um, and you you find out that Together, you're all working for the same goal, the same, mm -hmm. the same, the same um, idea, the same picture you're trying to put together yeah. for this audience, you know. And I think, I think it's one of the most beautiful things an artist can do is stage work. Mm -hmm. And I think another important thing is that, <clears throat> like what Josh was saying, that he enjoys work, like working with people who are easy to get along with, is mm -hmm. that. I, I've seen a lot that you might have really talented people that just don't get jobs because people don't like working with them, yeah. you know, or, and then you'll have not as talented people get a lot of jobs because they're just so lovable and everyone wants to work with them, which goes back to what I was saying. If you want to be successful in anything, you have to put your head on your shoulders, learn to love yourself and then learn to love the people around you and then you'll everything will be off it right right instead of thinking of it as this get out of my way I yeah it's not be a competition right. you know it's not a competition right yeah, although although it seems like it it's but really it's actually easy the for it to quickly yeah. seem that way that's true yeah oh, especially very. when you're in these audition settings like that's the one thing about Broadway is like everyone has to hustle so much to like find a workshop or a show to oh, yeah. be in. Um, but that's one thing I liked. You were never in a ballet company, and that's the one thing I liked for coming from a ballet company and being in a Broadway show is that there was no casting left to be had. Once the show was put together and all the people were chosen, nobody was vying for anybody else's roles. Yeah. You knew your purpose you in the show, your, and exactly. so we were able to really all be supportive one, of one another. And I remember when, like, um, a young person from the ensemble would go in for a big role. Like, we would all be up watching. I mean, people do that at the ballet, but there was just a different spirit about it. It was like yeah. everyone was so genuinely, I've never seen anything like it before, so everyone, so genuinely happy for everybody else's successes in the show. Yeah. And that was really cool. Yeah, it's, it's interesting to see the difference because it's... It, it, in ballet, it was kind of the same, just for like family shows. So I can't even imagine company level. So, yeah. <laughs> you know? um, but I think I I don't know if it's because perhaps on Broadway 
you've just gone through so much stuff to get to where to you're get at there. by that point that you're just grateful to be there. <laughs> That's know? absolutely what it is. And all yeah. of the people that are in the show, they're not taking that job for granted. Whereas when you're in a ballet company, some people feel like, oh, well, this is what, you know, happens. Yeah. You go into a school and then you just get a job and then yeah. they just give you repertoire. And yeah. I loved uh, the... But you, there's room to slack off. Exactly. There is. You're, well, Broadway, you have this, no this consistent job yeah. every year. And in Broadway, you have to go from one show where they may have loved you to re completely recreating yourself yeah. in the eyes of the next casting director and proving to them your value. And, and so that's just incredible. And I gained so much respect for all of our fellow Broadway colleagues. I yes. was, I was just like, you guys are incredible. And I remember Jay like being so, you know, everyone had such a positive attitude when it would be like the eighth show of the week and you were so tired. I remember being on stage once before a show and we were all really tired. Maybe it was like leading up to the Tonys where no one could take a day off or something like that. And Jay yeah. just looked at us and he goes, you guys, and then he swore, so I'm not going to say it because we might have children walk through it. We're on freaking Broadway. <laughs> and we like, were like all so tired. And, and then we're like, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, that's, I, I've had moments like that on Broadway, like in Billy Elliot, where I was just so tired. And then it's like a three hour show. And by the end, I had to do this like big electricity number. And I was backstage. And, and everyone was like, yeah, but how many kids want to be doing that right now? I'm like, you know what, you're, you're right. <laughs> I'm going to get on that stage and do what I know how to do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's incredible that you did that. I still can't believe. I'm like still reliving all of that for you. Um, so On the Town finishes, and we were, we were in it for a year. Yes. And then were, were you thinking, I'm going to stay in this biz? Or were you like, actually, I have no idea. Now, now I have even yeah. more questions. I feel like... After On the Town, I wasn't ready to continue working on Broadway because I still had a lot of things to figure out personally. Um, and that's after On the Town, that's why I kind of took a three year break and I just went on a backpacking trip. I, I bought a one way ticket to Mexico and I didn't even know if I was ever going to come back. I just kind of went over there to see what would happen. By yourself? Yeah, yeah, by myself. And then. There, I found a lot of answers that I was looking for about Wait, what I wanted. Where did you go? Oh, everywhere. I mean, I was in Oaxaca for a little bit, like Puerto Escondido. I was in Chiapas, which is like the mountainous, jungly area in the middle. Isn't I was it, like, by isn't the, it a little dangerous? It's. It depends on who who you are. Like for me, not dangerous at all because one, I already look a little like Hispanic yeah. and. I didn't dress up nice or anything. I just wore like my Mexican sweater and whatnot. Okay. I blended in pretty okay. well. I okay. spoke Spanish. Right. So it was it was fine for me. It just it it depends on where you are and who you are and you know, it's just it's it's Did not you like ever black. have any moments where you were like, Ooh, I shouldn't be here right now, this is a dangerous area? Um No? I not really. I've had well, I guess you'd like already that. like been in the <laughs> army. Yeah, I've had moments like that in the army, but not not in Mexico, no. But <laughs> but in Mexico, I I just learned a lot about myself. I learned I met a lot of people staying from hostel to hostel. Okay. Uh, and and I met this beautiful girl there. Oh, well, I fell in love over there, and it was just I learned so much about so much that I <laughs> by the end of it, three years later, I was ready to come back, and I came back to the states. And then that same month, oh, everything always happens Wait, the same month. You didn't, I came you, back. you didn't see your mom for that whole time. Um, I saw her, I saw her once during that whole time, but she came to see me. Oh, okay. Yeah, I okay. stayed. Wow, you really test your mom. mom. Yeah, oh, I feel so bad. I love my mom. I love you, mom. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> sorry for who I am. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, but uh, yeah, after that, I. Went back to the States, and in that same month, I get this weird, ambiguous Instagram message from the casting director of um, the Steven Spielberg West Side Story movie. 
And the message says, I didn't even know it was like a Steven Spielberg or a movie or anything. It just messages just saying, hey, we're looking, trying to find Bernardo for, for a West Side Story. And I was like, oh, it's probably for a revival of a Broadway show or something. I, I don't know if I'm ready to do Broadway right now. And then she, she sends me, uh, Steven Spielberg is directing the movie. And I'm like, uh, give me one <laughs> <Yeah>. minute. <laughs> I went to my room, filmed the audition right there, sent it in. And then a couple of days later, I get a call back from the casting director saying, hey, why don't you come to uh, Steven Spielberg wants to see a callback with you, he wants to see what, you know, what you're doing with with like what are you going to do with this role? So I ended up going to the callback and it was I was so nervous. <laughs> he's a nice guy, um, though, right? Oh, he's the nicest guy. One of the nicest people I've ever met in my life. And not only a nice person, but such a passionate person such a loving person and um working with him I learned so much and I was so inspired and I kind of understand he does what he does because he loves what he does and that's what right. I learned from him you uh -huh. know just I just gotta find what I love and then right. do it with all the passion that right. I have you know um and he's a very very understanding guy he's a very chill person you know and he's he was i was so happy to be in that just that callback with yeah. him you know and tony kushner was there who was the writer um for west side story he wrote lincoln and some other stuff uh incredible person as well and finally this callback finishes and then i kind of you know go back home and then like a week later i get a call from steven and he's like hey um David, right? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, this is David. Who, who, who is this? And he's like, hi, David. This is uh, um, this is Stephen. And I just want to call you. And then, like, right away, I caught him off. And I was like, oh, hi, Mr. Spielberg. How are you? You know, trying to be professional. And then he's like, oh, please don't call me Mr. Spielberg. Call me Stephen, because I'll be calling you Bernardo from now on. And that's that's how he told me. And my jaw dropped on the phone. It's like. 10 seconds of silence. I'm like, wait, 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 hold on. You're calling me what from now on? Wait, so, you have this amazing life of timing. Yeah. And I I don't know why. I This is my theory, but please, I'm, I'm, I could be completely wrong. So yeah. don't. Well, you got to have your own belief system about what. My theory is that I kind of, if I have an impulse to do something such as join the army or go on a backpacking trip to Mexico or do this show or do this or do that. If I have this impulse, I'll just do it. I won't question it. And it, it always brings me to the next chapter uh -huh. in perfect order. You know, I don't right. have to, I don't have to like wait or wonder or this. I just kind of do my thing and then what I love and then things just are waiting right after that. You so know? you're not a person that's guided by is this the right move and questioning yourself you're like i have this idea and i'm feeling <laughs> good about it i'm gonna go do it and you can't it's, think of anything else yeah and it's really bad sometimes it's like everything in life you gotta find a balance sometimes it might sometimes your impulses are gonna be wrong <laughs> you know? That's true. but it's it's about finding which impulses are the right ones and the right ones to go for you know yeah. because if you don't go for any impulse and you're just kind of sitting and waiting. You I know, feel nothing. the same way about why I did on the town. So I did that from a Facebook message as well. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Who is that? I forget how it, it like happened, but yeah, they Facebook messaged me. And then, I mean, I was in a space where I was like, I'm not a singer. Like, I'm not going to go do this audition. And then I woke up the next day and I was like, what are you doing? Like I was 30. I was like not getting to do new things at the ballet. I always did the same stuff and it was great, but I was like wanting to be in new works. And I was like, maybe this is my path of, yeah. and it's not how I thought it was going to be. And I, and I could have said no so easily. And I said no at first in my you head. And then I woke path. up the next day and I was like, what are you doing? Just audition for the experience of it. And then yeah. it sent me down this whole path. I mean, my whole life changed. Your whole that. life changed. Yeah. <laughs> I got divorced. Like everything <laughs> changed. Yeah. And it's incredible when you're open to things happening, maybe not the way you thought they were going to happen and being aware and listening and just saying, maybe why not? 
you know, yeah. like just try and see. Or, you know, and instead of being like a no person and feeling like that's not me, that's not what I do, that was a moment for me that felt like that, that was like, you know, Absolutely. like a destiny. Well, I mean, that's, you, you do that because you're an artist, you know, as, as, as an artist, whether you're a painter or an artist, a uh, singer, whatever it is that you're doing, you kind of, you kind of just learn to go with your good impulses. Uh -huh, you, you listen. Go with what feels right, yeah. you know, um, and you stop analyzing so much because yeah. I, I mean, naturally I'm more of an analyzer, but I've learned to kind of find the balance and not overthink stuff so much and just be more in the moment and be grateful for every little thing that's around me, yeah. you know? Yeah. That's super cool. So then you landed like oh, a yeah, blockbuster man. movie. It's not out yet, but it's going to be huge. Yeah. It's, it's coming out December, hopefully, if this shutdown ends. Um, but this, after this, I ended up, I was so happy with the call from Steven and then the process started. I had to start gaining weight because I needed to look like a, a boxer for this one. Okay. You know? So I had to gain some weight. I had to start dieting, start going to the gym like four or five times a week. So dieting um, to gain weight. To gain weight, yeah. Not dieting to lose weight. I do the opposite. I have to diet to gain. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what did you yeah. eat? I'm curious. What was your diet? Uh, a lot of milkshakes, a lot of chicken, a lot of beef, just anything that'll A lot stack. of chicken. <laughs> <laughs> anything that stacks calories and protein. Are we talking stacks. fried chicken? Because then I understand. Yeah, fried chicken. Yeah. Fried chicken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and milkshakes, malt, malt milkshakes. That'll do the job. If you ever need to gain weight for a future role, you know. Okay. Malt shakes. Okay, good to know. <laughs> good to know. That sounds like fun. Yeah. So <laughs> after that, um, we started the rehearsal process. Um, and then the rehearsal process was just one of the most beautiful things I've ever experienced. Just to see how Steven interacts, Steven Spielberg interacts with this whole orchestra of people from the business side of things to the artistic side of things. He's just putting everything together. He really um, is in it. He's in it. Yeah. He's in the yeah. moment. Yeah. He's, he, he's, he's not <laughs> like delegating. He's no. in the rehearsals, approving every and last little thing that's absolutely. being prepared. And the biggest lesson I've learned from him is how flexible he is. He, he kind of sets, like, a plan. Okay. But he shows up the day, and that plan, he could just change it completely. He could be like, actually, no, because the sun is hitting this way, so now we're going to do this whole other thing. And then he just changes it and goes with it. Uh -huh. And he trusts that he knows what he's doing. And uh -huh. I trust that he knows what he's doing, too. Yeah. You know? so yeah. like, Steven, you do your thing. I'm just here. You know, I'm just standing here. Uh -huh. <laughs> so it was... It was a beautiful experience to learn from an artist I've, I've, I've admired so much since I was a little kid. You know, since yeah. I, I was a kid, I, I saw all his movies. I know. And that's one of the beautiful things about our, our job field is that we get to work with people we've admired since we were children. That's true. You know, a historian can't, a historian can't ponder on the thought of, oh, what would it be like if I could work with Alexander the Great, you know, or... <laughs> someone back in his nah man they're gone but us we get to work with people we admire right now yeah, they're still cool. alive they're still creating right now you yeah. know so i it's def it, for me it felt like a college education course of how like the movie business is done and like lighting and sound and this and that it's just so much and so beautiful so do you have to have an accent in this movie too Yes, I do. Yeah, it's a Puerto Rican accent. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't want to spoil too much. So okay, yeah, we won't, we won't talk it about it too much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but we've seen a couple pictures you guys have been able to post on Instagram. Yeah. And it just looks like so authentic, but new and yeah. fresh and real. Like, yeah, I, I kind of raw. Like it's I feel like it's gonna be great, um, and I'm like not just not saying like that. It's not like up. Like yeah, no, no, no. It's it's very raw and it's gritty. That's all I'm gonna say. It's it's just real to me. It's real, and I'm 
I'm very excited for this to come out for people to watch it um, because it's not just a film. It's a film that it's a it's a passion project for Steven Spielberg. Oh yeah, which is a huge deal. Yeah, um, the, the so... reason he ended up doing this movie is kind of as a memorandum to his mom, his mother, um, because his mom had gotten him the West Side Story soundtrack when he was a kid, and he was in love with the soundtrack, and he promised her that one day he would make. That's the West. So, cool. That's so, so cool. this is a full-on passion project for him, and the fact that I was able to be part of that, I I know it's gonna be great, and I'm just happy I was able to be. A Have part you of it. seen some of the like playbacks or whatever you um, call it? I've seen some playbacks, and it, it looks amazing, but it's kind of hard to watch myself. Oh yeah, I hear um, you. Um, I don't know why. I don't know how I'm gonna watch this movie. Every time I come out, I'm just gonna go like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just it's. That's how I would watch myself. Weird. Yeah, it feels weird, so I don't know. Well, and also, like, it's one thing to, like, be on Broadway on a live stage. And and as a dancer, you know, we didn't train to be speaking or singing on stage. and But in live theater, you don't have to, like, hear it, you yeah. know? And, and, like, a movie to, like, have it out there. Because, you know, you sound different in your own head yeah, you than you do from the outside. So to, I know that it's very weird to hear yourself. So that's oh, yeah. hard. We had these, like, earpieces on our ears, in our ears. Uh -huh. And the music would play there, right? And we had to sing along and dance. And you would just see, like, everyone sing, like, dancing and singing to, like, nothing. But it yeah. was, it, the whole, all the music is here. And we're like, oh, God, we hope that we're, like, on key right now. We sound yeah. decent. It's hard. It's crazy. And the whole thing yeah. was like, out. were you like outside for most of all of the yeah, shots? Yeah, I mean, we had this one week where we were shooting and it was, it was like during the heat wave. I don't know if you remember that. There was a heat wave in the summer. It was like a hundred and something and it was so hot. And I had this thick black cotton wool sweat shirt on. Uh, like for the movie uh -huh. and I, oh god that was one of the most miserable days of filming but besides that day mm, everything was, was great oh, that is so cool <laughs> i mean do you like look now like you i mean who knows what's next for you but like look at your resume already and it's I, almost like you just happened upon it all i because i did it's happen just upon incredible it all. <laughs> i i feel i'm very grateful and i'm very lucky that i've been able to have such a, I don't know, a, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Like a, Successful? <laughs> not a, Well, not success, but just like a, a, a life where I've learned a lot. You uh -huh. know, I've learned, cool. I've learned it's a full. lot thus far. Yeah. yeah. Um, and there's so much more learning to do. <laughs> that's, that's the problem with like learning is that you learn stuff. And then you realize you don't know anything. Right. That's and you true. learn it. You learn it again, and then you realize you really don't know yeah, anything. We're constantly never-ending cycle, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Of pretending you know when so, you really don't. So are you you got the like the bug now for acting in movies. I I have the bug for acting, and I have the bug for music. I think acting and music. You play guitar. Is that what you're talking about? Or are you like? Yes, guitar. Uh -huh. um, that's mainly my instrument. I play piano and guitar for like the songs that I like to write. When um, did you learn to do all that? Well, I started piano when I was a kid because my older sister played piano and I just, I was fascinated by it. I so. have tried my whole life to learn the piano, like here and there, like not yeah. trying too hard, but like, <laughs> like I try enough to be like, I am not good at this. <laughs> <laughs> Piano's hard. It's I really hard. I don't think I will uh, ever be capable of playing an instrument, and I am constantly amazed at people that can do that. I don't understand how you can – I just don't get it. Yeah. My brain is, like, confused. It, how can you helps. remember and the fingers just go or oh, the violin? Yeah. I just don't – How oh, even yeah. on a guitar, how do you remember where the chords are? <laughs> Repetition. It's like everything. It's like – how do you remember fifth position, fourth position, third position? Like, two musicians, that's confusing. <laughs> you know? That's true. <laughs> but I, I feel like it's also easier if you started at a much younger age. A young age, age. yeah. Um, because then it, you're, just, you're just a sponge. You're just grabbing everything, and it kind yeah. of stays there and subconsciously, yeah. and it's easier to tap into it later on.
Uh huh. Uh -huh. So are you going to start a band? Um, I kind of <laughs> want to. I, I have to. I kind of want to wait a little longer. I want to make sure I'm really ready for this. Okay. I don't want to get ahead of myself. <laughs> but um, yeah, I kind of want to get more into like blues and funk music. Oh, that's fun. Really I like that. Yeah, blues and funk. I want to bring it back. You know. That's so cool. You're, I'm just thinking. I don't know why I think of your mom a lot. She must be so proud of you. Oh, she's she's so proud and. God, my mom is one of the most incredible people that I, I've been so fortunate and lucky because ever since I was a kid, she always kind of paved this path for me to be able to do all these things that I'm able to do. Today. And she gave um, you the freedom to do it. And she gave me the freedom and not only the freedom, she supported me. I mean, on top of you it. guys moved to New York, the whole family? Yeah, my whole family moved to New so York. So your dad, what did he do with his job? So he he just transferred to a like a New York City research center. Oh, okay. Um, so he could because he was a research scientist in San Diego, so he just transferred over okay. to New York. But yeah, the fact that my family would do that—that's incredible. Me, um, is that it really shows shows you like how much love our family has for each other. You yeah, know? yeah, that's so cool. And do they live in New York still? Uh, my mom lives in Italy. And she's she's so happy. She's, is she safe right now during this? She's safe, yeah, okay. yeah. She's definitely safe. She's like out in the like thirty minutes from Rome in the middle of these like mountains. She has like a cabin there. It's really nice, you know. She sounds like it sounds like <laughs> yeah. you guys are, you know, similar. Yeah, she's she's a very deep person yeah. and, and very wise, you know, so I, I love deep her so thinker. much. And, yeah, <laughs> and my dad, my dad is lives in Ohio, um, in Cleveland, Ohio. He works there, um, and he's I I love my dad too so much, and he's helped me throughout my life with everything I have ever needed. And from him, he he's a goofball. He's my mom is really deep, and my dad's just a giant goofball. Uh -huh. So I try to I try to take a little a little from both. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. I can, I'm sure that they're just amazed at all of the different things you've done and to what like level is just incredible i'm I'm amazed that they they don't hate me after everything <laughs> i put them through <laughs> you know? if i have a child like me i don't want a child like me how old are you now david are you like 12? i'm 26 uh-huh yeah we're about yes. 10 years apart i think i remember years, that yeah yeah, so in, on the town, I was like 30 and you were 20. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Wow. That's crazy oh how much time God. has flown by. A lot. So Five I'm, years. I, I want to organize a Zoom reunion for the oh, whole cast. Please. Yeah. I'm going to try to like find all the emails and send <sighs> it out. Because what else are we doing right now? We're all home. No, there's nothing else to do. We I've been doing so many zoom calls with so many people it's been really nice actually yeah let's have a reunion i'm ready yeah. for it it's time i always thought i think like oh we should have a reunion right away like the first year after we finished and then i was like i feel like i'm the only one that wants to do this <laughs> so i'll let little time pass <laughs> yeah are you are you excited to get back to work or are you enjoying this time off you have you know i will always enjoy being in a studio and dancing and traveling and moving and it's hard to do it right now in like that a small space but I also know I will never have this time again with my daughter so yeah. I'm like you know I, what it's scary it's to a not, blessing yeah it's scary to not know how many yeah. paychecks I'm gonna get this year but I also just feel like how can you be upset about it when you get to spend this time with yeah. your kid and you know when Never when I have to admit, when we first started, um, the the pandemic first started, I had come from a two week uh, gigging kind of tour in Europe, and she had been with my parents. And over Facetime, she was calling me like pa she was saying Papa when she saw me. And we were always like, ha ha ha, that's not funny, you know. Like, and she had been saying Mama properly before I left, and then she was kind of like getting confused over the phone when we would Facetime and. It took like two weeks before, after I landed, for her to kind of like properly get it. And she says mommy all the time now. And I'm just like, this is You're nice. Part now. You know, like, I love my job and I will yeah. always want to be working and having this other purpose. But um, 
you know, this is like forced family time and I'm a person that would need it to be forced because I just yeah. love to be busy and I kind of get crazy yeah. and do all of these things. And I just, I love her so much. It's wonderful. How can you, how can you regret these moments, you know, when, when you get to be with family? So. Oh, absolutely. I think that's like the one good thing about what's been going on is that everyone's kind of been reunited with their family yeah. and have been building that love connection that has been deteriorating over yeah. so many years. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, like you talk about the rat race, it is so easy to just feel like you're supposed to chase the next thing yes. and to keep, keep going. And it's like, I think one, one thing this, this time can remind us all is like, it's okay to stay home and just be with your family. Like, it's almost like it used to be an embarrassing thing to like never go out. Right. <laughs> And now we're learning, like, it's a wonderful thing and to slow down and to enjoy, like, the simpler things and, and really just be grateful for those simple things instead of feeling like, what am I going to do next and how am I going to achieve more and da 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 da, da like. Absolutely. It's, it's just, it's also, like, kind of the mentality of, well, especially a city like New York. I where know. Boom, 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 I boom. Know. Nonstop, everyone's competing, everyone's fighting against each other for the same job. Um, and it's I, it's understandable. But then when I've traveled to other places in the world, I went to Spain, and I rem I just can't believe how relaxed people are in Spain. Everyone's just, like, chilled out. Yeah. You know, they, they come down from work for a happy hour at, like, 11 a.m. They have a beer. They go back to work for, like, two hours, and they go home. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Just, this is what like life is about really see when it's amazing they enjoy it, it. it's it's a whole different lifestyle no a one's like eating lifestyle. their lunch walking down the street to their next appointment <laughs> <laughs> just like jaywalking jay through every red light you can new get. york is is <laughs> insane and I, we all love it for all of its insanity <laughs> but like yeah. we need to learn more how how to just sit down and have a meal and to yeah. slow down and i just think this moment it's like some forced um, lessons that we all kind of kind of needed. It, yeah, I mean, New York is exciting. I think the thing that draws everyone to it is that it takes you out of your comfort zone. That's and true. when you get comfortable, you get bored. And when you get bored, you go and get out of your comfort zone. That's yeah. pretty much what. That's the cycle. Yeah. So New York is like that thing that helps you break that cycle. But then you have to learn how to like take it back a notch and not forget what life is actually about. Yeah. I have to ask you one last question about, like, the military. Like, how does it inform who you are today? Like, that experience and politics and how you... Not that I, we have to talk about politics, but, like, when you see stuff on the news or stuff is happening in the world, do you get... Do you, do you have a different um, perspective that you feel like people just don't understand? I think... The biggest thing I've kind of learned is that the only reason there are fights and people fight is because there's a big, giant m miscommunication. Uh -huh. Like, people are not understanding each other and because there's different languages or different slangs, different ways of saying different things. So everyone's taking offense to some stuff and no one knows. Like, it's just no one's on the same page about anything. So for me, if the world really isn't on the same page about anything, I, I can't really have an opinion on how to, on, on what I think would be best for this world or, or that because w we haven't even fixed our first issue, which is communication. Right. <laughs> you know? So I think the army for me kind of shaped me in the way that I feel like I'm I'm definitely much more of a go-getter now. Um, and the Army kind of teaches you that, to not sit and just wait for something to happen. You have okay. to get up and go and do it, and then something will happen. You kind of yeah. have to take that first step, yeah. and whatever else will take that. Initiate that the step. momentum. Yeah. Exactly. You have to create that momentum, and then it'll just start growing. Um, and then as for as for politics, it's just a, it's, it's a big... For me, I just don't understand why the division that exists today in politics is blown out of proportion, if, if, if that makes any sense. Because I feel like it's, 
two sides of the same coin. Yeah. That's really, to me, what politics is. It's just two different faces, but they're really the same coin. Right. You know, you have, you could have five, six, seven, ten different presidents or whatever you could have, but the question is who's paying those presidents to write certain rules? And that's where the real politics gets serious because a lot of times you you have a lot of pop puppets, you know, that right. look at us now. <laughs> so right. It's, it's just, to me, in politics, it's just a lot of puppets and then a lot of people behind those puppets telling them what to do. Do you still so, have friends that are in the military? Um, I, I guess I do. I think two of them are still in the military. A lot of my friends left. Like, the big thing in the military is you do your, like, three-year contract, and then you're out, yeah, you okay. know? Yeah, yeah uh, usually, I mean, what surprised me the most about the military is how young everyone was. Yeah. You know, I didn't realize how, because in movies, you see, like, military movies, and so all these, like, soldiers are played by 35-year-old actors, 40-year-old actors, and I'm, I remember the Army, and it was not like that. It was a bunch of 17, 18-year-old kids in a platoon. You're not trying to figure out what life is about, you know. That is incredible so, to me. Yeah, it's it, it was definitely um, a different a different world in there, for Thank sure. Thank you for the insight, though, because it's obviously a world that I will never be <laughs> seeing the, the world <laughs> from that direction. It's just like I'm super curious. Like, yeah. it's just, and thank you for your service, by the way. Oh. It was just Memorial Day. Yeah, they, I, when was Memorial? Like three days ago? Yeah, it? it was it was this last Monday. On Monday, on Monday, yeah. 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 <laughs> Thank yeah. you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Well, I won't take any more of your time, David. Thank. It was so great to catch up, and really I, nice, it's really nice to catch up. Thank yeah. you so much for this. Seriously. Yeah, and I'm just happy to share your story with everyone. You have a lot of like amazing stories and like lots of little wisdoms that are are helpful to people, yeah. especially at a time like this when we need some yeah. perspective. <laughs> Yeah, some of them are good. Some of them are really bad. Don't listen to all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, David, and stay all right, safe. Thank you so much. Have a great night. <laughs> you too.